Um, he has a unique perspective on the rapidly evolving global media landscape, and I'm delighted he could be with us today. Uh, please join me in welcoming Andy Bird. Good afternoon. Got your name tag, here we go. Yeah, I'm all good. Yeah. So, so Andy, we've just heard from um, Tim Berners-Lee and talking about the evolution of the web. Um, you work for a company that's been a, a driving force in, in the media business, the media industry for 90 years. Um, how, how has Disney evolved from um, you know, an animation company um, to, not, to become this kind of giant that has, you know, has its feet in every, every corner of the globe and international markets all over the place? Well, I think, um, simply put, we've stuck to our principles. And that they are great storytelling, innovation, creativity, and use of technology. Whether, as you say, you know, go back to, to um, Mickey Mouse and the, the use of sound with animation. And, you know, we were the first company to do that. We were the first company to, to, to create a feature-length animated movie, to, to first company to get into Technicolor, um, all the way through to you know, the innovations that we continue to try to do today. But at the heart of it is great storytelling. Now, how... The, let's talk about some of the brands that Disney, Disney owns. I, I think um, people sometimes forget that, you know, they think, think of Disney as a, an animation group, but there, there's a lot under the hood there, isn't there? Why don't you tell us about some of the, 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 the brands that, that, you, that you guys operate? Well, obviously, you know, first and foremost, preeminently, is the Disney brand. Um, as you mentioned, we have two extremely large, and in fact, our most profitable brand as a company is ESPN which is the sports network, which is predominantly in the US, um, although we have presence uh, elsewhere internationally. Um, we also own a, a free-to-air TV network in the US, ABC, um, which as well as being a network is a producer of many um, hit shows that get um, broadcast um, around the world. Um, we acquired, as you said, um, Pixar about eight years ago now, seven, eight years ago. And, and then shortly after that, uh, three years ago now, Marvel. Um, and most recently, as you mentioned, Lucas um, and the Star Wars and Indian Indiana Jones franchise. I forgot about that one. Yes. Yeah. But we're focused on Star Wars first. Right, there's enough to be getting on with. Um, so there's a lot there. Um, how's the company used technology to, to develop these brands and, and other Disney products in different international markets? Well, we have a belief, and if those of you who have been to any of our theme parks, or if you've seen, I think, a, a Pixar movie is a, is a great example of the technology that underpins that great storytelling is immense. If you go up to Pixar, not only do you have the creative community that is, you know, the animators and the, and the story artists, but there's a huge data rooms of, and incredible processing and computer innovation that's going on at that company to create digital effects in animation that almost fools the audience into believing it's real. And, and, and it, it always amazes me with every single Pixar um, release how they push the boundaries of digital innovation to create, I mean, most recently with Monsters University, if you, if you look at the technology that's created to create the fur that's um, uh, on some of those characters, as an example, if you think back to Finding Nemo and the, real, the, re, the reality or the realism that they managed to um, employ for all of those underwater shots when you think that all it is is bits and bytes, yeah. um, is quite incredible. So it's always marrying that creative storytelling ability with, with innovation and utilizing great technology. And that transcends its way through to, um, as I say, the physical um, entities, most, most notably in our parks and resorts, where we're constantly looking, not just within the attractions itself, but ways to make the guest experience that much better and utilize technology in that mm -hmm. way. Has the company changed the way 
that exports its, its, its product, its content, to international markets. It used to be, a, 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 I'm, I'm sort of lumping Disney in with other big US mm -hmm. media companies, but you'd get a Disney movie or a you know, Hollywood movie, you'd put a local language track on it, and that would be it. Has that changed over the years? Yeah, I think, and, and part of my responsibility is to shepherd that change. I think it's fair to say 10 years or so ago, we were largely an export company of US produced product, as you mentioned, film and television primarily. And the, the, the majority of the time, um, the most we would do to localize that product was to dub it into local language. And so as you looked around the world, the Walt Disney Company China or the Walt Disney Company India, the, the Walt Disney Company in the UAE, which we have, um, were all re largely representative offices of the, the main American Walt right. Disney Company. And what we've set about trying to do in each of these markets, because in, under that system, you have a sort of one-size-fits-all structure. You know, you make something and you see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll move on to the next thing. And so the, the, there was very little difference between those representative offices. And so what we've been striving to do is, is really move from being uh, the Walt Disney Company China to asking ourselves, how do we become the Chinese Walt Disney Company? And from being the Walt Disney Company India to really asking ourselves, how do we become the Indian Walt Disney Company, et cetera, et cetera. And what does that take? What businesses should we, we be in? How do we approach so that we remain, you know, one of the key words for me is relevancy. How we remain relevant to consumers in each of these markets. As Sir Tim was saying, the world, thanks largely to his efforts, mm. has accelerated at such a fast pace um, that it's really important for a company and brands such as ours that we, we remain relevant in front of consumers and, and relevant culturally um, to their needs as well. So how, how does this... In practical terms, what does this mean, say in a region like this one or in, in India, how do you stay relevant? How do you, if, if you're, trying to, you're trying to tailor your, what you're mm. producing or producing at a local level, mm. is, that, is, is that the right way to look at it? Well, it's, it's a couple of things. First of all, we look at the infrastructure of a particular country because they vary enormously. And, and secondly, regulation, um, the, the adoption of technology and the growth of the economy. I guess those are the four main pillars that we look at in terms of tailoring our entry strategy into each particular market. And I think, um, you know, as way of example, and I can talk specifically about what we're doing in the UAE, but I think China and India, for, for us, are, are, are good examples because they're almost, our approach to each of those markets now is almost diametrically opposed to each other. China, as you know, is, um, has heavy regulation and restriction on the media business. The number of films that get imported into the country, um, the uh, number of television channels. We're not able to have a Disney channel, for example, in China. Um, foreign animation has been banned on prime time in, in, in the country for a few years to, to help support the growth of the local animation um, business. So for a lot of media and entertainment companies, our peers, China's very hard. And you've seen companies go in and then retreat and go mm. in and retreat. We, we fortunately have many um, strings to our bow, mm. and amongst them is the licensing business, which we find has been a very effective way of, of entering a market. And we've built a strategy very much built around licensing and retail. Obviously, we've got a theme park in, Shang in Hong Kong. We're building a large theme park in Shanghai. We'll then use our media to complement the storytelling through our retail operations. Um, and we've created businesses that we can talk about if you want, such as Disney English, yeah, which are unique to that market. Tell us about Disney English. So um, one of the things when, when we, we set about creating this more, more localized approach was, was a couple, we, we, we made a couple of strategic decisions. The first was to empower the local management, so to give authority and autonomy and break that tie from, from Burbank, from mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And the, the gentleman who still runs the... the Greater China region for us um, had noticed that there's English language proficiency and English language learning is, 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 is very, very important in, in, in Chinese culture. You have what is known as the six pocket syndrome as a result of the single child policy. 
You know, for every one child, there are six adults that are looking after that child, two sets of parents and two sets of grandparents. Mm. Enormous amount of pressure put on this child, and, and they want that child to have a better life than, than they've had, and English language is seen to be very important. And as we looked at the market, we, we, we realized that and, and felt that actually Disney could provide a service of English language with physical um, learning um, institutions um, that was unique to the marketplace, that really um, involved um, the value system of the Disney brand. It's not as much learning English through Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. um, it's learning English to the quality that you would come to expect of Disney, with the magic that you would come to expect of Disney, mm -hmm. and with the originality and innovation that you would expect of Disney and the customer service that you would expect of Disney. Mm -hmm. So we reinvented the entire business model of how you deliver English language learning to Chinese families. We now have 44 um, learning institutions throughout greater China. I mean, they're, like, they're like little schools. They aren't are. They, yeah. they are. Um, there's over 35,000 children learning through it, but we redesigned everything. Yeah. You know, we, we worked with our Imagineering department and, uh, to create an interactive wall, some proprietary software, again, innovation using um, some, some digital technology. So you go into a classroom and one wall is completely interactive, another wall has a projector on it. We put sound into the classroom to create an immersive ex experience. Um, one, we used our Imagineers to design the furniture, um, we used our publishing group to, cr to create a, an original curriculum that we own. We used our music group to create 400 original songs. We put it all together to create an experience unlike any other mm. you can and, and, and with a level of customer service that, you, again, people come to expect of Disney. So there's a great, I went to see, a, it's fantastic. You go and see, you know, there's a class I went of these three and four year old um, Chinese children and they were learning colors. And so on one wall is a, a projection of a fish tank. And of course you hear all the aerated noises of fish. So immediately you're immersed into this world of being in a fish tank. And on the other wall, the interactive wall, a single colored fish. There's a red fish and a blue fish, a yellow fish. And the teacher takes one of the children by the hand and says, hey, come and, come and show me the red fish. And the child goes to the wall, touches the red fish. It animates up the wall, disappears, and then on the projected fish tank it goes plop and it mm. comes in. It's, a long, it's magic. It's a long way from, it's, an, from it, hand drawn animated. It movie. is a long way, but it's uh, utilizing storytelling. Yeah. It uses a lot of our storytelling, but it uses a lot of original storytelling. So even through that, as I say, the core values of what you've come to expect from Disney can evolve and adapt to the needs of a local market. What, what about other, other markets? Um, that you've been able to use technology to, to, to get the brand out there. Um, and, there are, and there are markets, I mean, in Korea. Korea, with, Japan, yeah. where a very leading edge, you know, um, uh, technology. In Korea, of course, they have probably the most sophisticated and highly penetrated and, and highest speed broadband internet service and mobile service in the world. And that's, that's changed consumer habits. I mm. mean, things like, you know, DVDs, although I th it's interesting as I was going around Abu Dhabi today, it's very hard, not many stores are selling DVDs anymore, right. um, uh, apart from Disney ones, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> um, um, and uh, there we've learned to, 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 to utilize new digital business models to deliver our video. Um, we've been working with Marvel actually on, on sort of creating comic, um, they're not quite web, web tunes per se, but it's, util it's like digital web publishing at a, that utilizes the really high bandwidth and the mobility. One of the interesting things that mobile phones and smartphones, as Tim was mentioning, bring is this ability for consumers to snack. Right. Snack on media and snack on, on content. You know, in the, in the not too distant past, you, know, you, would, you, would, you would sit and you would consume media by watching television. Mm or going to the movies. Well, now you can be at the bus stop or in the queue at the supermarket or sitting, waiting, having an interview like this, yes. and you can get out your phone and you can snack on media. It, mm -hmm. And so we've, we've experimented a lot in Korea about what that means, you know, the duration of content. You know, there are very popular services, in particularly 
in, um, well, in, in, in Asia with Line and in Japan and Kakao out of Korea, but also in the US with Vine, mm. where the people are posting content of six to 15 seconds duration. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about, well, what's the impact of that consumer behavior yeah. on ourselves? You know, Japan, we have a unique um, uh, consumer, which is it's primarily, it's not exclusively, primarily tailored at um, young adult female. Mm -hmm. So there we've really embraced a, a lot of, we have a Disney mobile service. So you can go in with Docomo and, and SoftBank and buy a Disney branded mobile phone that comes preloaded with a whole host of Disney content tailored just for that particular market. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a few examples of how we're trying to really still retain sort of the, the, the macro brand values between, behind each of those respective brands, but really focus on the consumer needs in an individual market. And I guess it helps if you have IP, if you have characters and stories which everyone in the world knows. I mean, superheroes from Marvel or Star Wars or Yes. The Mouse or the Pixar characters. I mean, that, that, that's yes. a big help, isn't it? I think you know one of the differentiators between Disney and, and those brands that you mentioned and, and other media companies is we tend to, first of all, look, you know, part of the acquisition strategy was we want consumer-facing brands. If I were to say to you, to everyone in the, 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 the audience today, okay, let's all go watch a Disney movie. You've got a broad understanding of what you're going to be in for. Now, if I were to mention, well, let's go and let's all go and see a Sony movie or a Universal movie, that level of understanding is not there. It's more title-driven. Let's go and see Argo or let's go and see Captain Phillips, yeah. rather than the studio behind it. And we've we focus a lot on on that brand, that brand quality. The same will happen with Marvel. Obviously, Pixar is there and Star Wars has defined its, its, itself for, for generations. And yep. so, so we think that's very important. And the other thing with our IP, when we're, telling the, when we're creating these stories and creating this IP, which I think also is unique, is you know, under the Disney brand, there are 34 different businesses that that, that IP can be leveraged. Mm -hmm. And most consumers consume IP one or two or three times and then it's gone, and they're onto something else. Oh, and they also consume it over a relatively short period of time. With, 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 with our intellectual property, what we're trying to do is have consumers have a broad um, opportunity to experience that brand, from television, digital products, through to our cruise ships, our theme parks, stage shows, publishing, music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm. and over a long period of time, over mm. many decades. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean started as a themed park attraction mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and went all the way through its cycle for movies and the like. So, yeah. so creating that breadth and depth of consumer engagement behind consumer-facing brands is something that we try to different, allows us, we hope, to differentiate ourselves in consumers' minds. But what about other markets? I mean, I, I, I think... Some people in the audience might be surprised to hear how, how uh, involved you are in India, and particularly the Indian box office. We were talking about this mm. the other day. What, what do you tell us a bit about that? Well, I mentioned China, and, yeah, and th you know, India is almost, as I say, the opposite. In India, you know, many of you know, Indians only focus on three things, movies, television, and cricket. Mm. You know, particularly when the cricket's playing, the national team, and, and that's it, the country stops. And so for Disney, you know, for, if, if we're creating the Indian Walt Disney Company, it's, it was vital to me that we had to play in the Indian movie space. You know, the Indian, box, uh, Indian movies constitute 94% of the box office. Hollywood movies, 6%. So in 10 years' time, I want an Indian family to say, hey, let's go watch a Disney movie. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about the brand has, has resonated in Indian cinema going, just as the same way under Western audience will say, hey, let's go watch a mm. Disney movie. So in order to do that, two years ago, we acquired um, UTV, who are the leading film studio, and we've spent the last two years reversing that into becoming um, the Walt Disney Company India, and uh, adding on our, our, our other employees. And, and I, we now produce more movies out of India than we do out of Hollywood. It's amazing. Yeah. Which is, I think, kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then from that, we have nine TV networks. Mm -hmm. um, we, we acquired within that um, 
acquisition India Games, who are the largest mobile gaming company in India, because we believe um, you know, mobile in that market, as in other markets, is going to become incredibly important. Broadband and the internet in India is going to be completely mobile. Mm. Um, it's not going to be fixed line. It's going to open up the opportunities with tablets and second screen viewing. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to be ahead of that thinking so that when 4G enters the market on a, on a, on a wide scale and, and there is this uptake in devices, I think there's close to 900 million mobile devices in India today. Mm. You know, we, have a, we have a presence there. And then just as retail was leading in China, Retail is sort of the one that's coming up behind in India as, 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 ma as mass retail takes shape, as more shopping malls are developed. So it's a good example of really, really tailoring our business mix mm. for the particular needs of that country. What about the theme parks? I mean, we, we have a, a Disney theme park in Shanghai coming mm -hmm. online in 2015. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of things are you doing with technology in the theme parks that helps you get the brand out in front of a a broader audience. We talked about, I think, 3D printing. Yeah, is well, there's a couple of interesting things that we're doing. First of all, social media and social engagement. I think the role of social media in marketing mm. is very, very interesting. And then using technology to enhance the guest's experience. And there's a couple of um, ways we're doing this. In Orlando, we've just um, introduced a, a, a Magic My Way, a Magic Plus um, a device, which is a wristband that when you book, um, a vacation at Walt Disney World, we send you these which you are then able to customize with an, with an itinerary that suits your family. So if you want to go to Space Mountain on this day at this time and you want to see this show at this time, we know what you want to do, whereas at the moment, as you enter the, the, the parks, you're somewhat anonymous and, and, and we're trying to make that experience so much better for me. You can use the device to open your hotel, to access the photos you take within the park, to pay for merchandise as you, and food and beverage as you go around this the park. This is wearable technology. It is totally yeah. wearable technology yeah. that, that really enhances the consumer experience. You know, we're, we're, we're great um, fans of, um, I think 3D printing is going to revolutionize the way all of us work. I think every home within 10 years, probably less than that, will have a, its own 3D printer, just as many homes now have a, a, a 2D or laser printer. And we've been working with technology where you can easily capture the, the facial features of individual guests in a very fast and, and quick way so that you can turn that facial uh, features of uh, individualized and put it onto dolls. And so we've been experimenting actually with Star Wars. So you can go in and you can buy a Luke Skywalker doll, but you can actually put your face on it. Yeah, sign me up for one of those. And, uh, um, and the same you can do with Disney Princess and the like. And so, so it's utilizing that technology um, at a scale and at a speed and at a price point that um, en enhances consumers' um, enjoyment when they come and visit us at our parks or, or anywhere else that they experience us. It's fa fantastic. I mean, Tilbury, running out of time, but we have time for a couple of questions, and I see some hands, lots of hands. This first one was over here, I think. Hi, Andy. Uh, Fahad Khan, uh, founder and CEO of One Public from New York City. Um, Steve Jobs and you guys set the precedence of relationship between Hollywood and um, Silicon Valley via Pixar, uh, and that's going well now. Uh, Mr. Ari Emanuel is also kind of you know on, on, on the same path, but there are headwinds uh, in the entertainment business as far as profitability is concerned. So, how concerned are you with that relationship, and how do you see that shaping mm. uh, going forward? That's a very very good question, um, and it comes down to we have, and thanks to our CEO Bob Iger, we 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 have. All of us, uh, we have a very forward-thinking um, outlook, and we are we are um, uh, encouraged to embrace technology. We're encouraged to move forward. In fact, Disney was the first company to do a deal with iTunes, and at the time, and it was before there was any direct relationship between the between the companies when you know, through the acquisition of Pixar and and other media companies thought we were crazy embracing you know. Steve the, he created the video iPod, you know, if you can remember way back when, and, and he came to the company. It's interesting, most new technologies, they come to us first because they want to, to have 
a Disney brand or an ESPN brand or a Pixar brand or Marvel, now to be Star Wars, those brands on their, on their hardware as it was. And that's what happened with that relationship. But I think it's very, you know, for us as a company, we have to be very, very proactive. And we try to be very proactive in terms of how we embrace technology. We can't be afraid of technology. We need to, we need to go and, and mirror consumer behavior. You can't fight it. You can't, you know, the, those days are long gone. Mm. It's rather, you know, as we come back to marketing, I think it's, you know, you can't convince people a movie's good or a movie's not good f by spending tens or hundreds of millions of dollars on, mar on traditional marketing. Yeah. Within five minutes of a movie opening in New York City, the whole of the world knows whether it's good or bad. No amount of media that you spend from that moment on. A curse. It is a blessing yeah. and it can be a curse. Yeah. Now, lots of people, lots of hands going up. Um, there's a lady over here at the back. Hi, uh, my name is Abir Abushmais. I'm an MBA grad from the University of California, Irvine. I actually interned at uh, Disney in Burbank, ah. so I'm so excited that you're here today. Um, my question is um, about the Middle East and content from the Middle East. So Disney started with one character and it's now a beloved character around the world. Um, like I dream of a day being from the Middle East, of a day where we can actually take our content and stories to the rest of the world. What can we learn from Disney to make this happen one day? Thank you so much. That's a great question. And my, my my youngest son plays soccer every weekend at UC Irvine, so I'm a frequent visitor. Um, I think I go back always to the premise, and one of the things, it's a, it's a, it's a very good question and a recurring theme. People um, ask me a lot of time, and, and ultimately the, the, it comes down not to technology, but to st the art of storytelling and good writing. And so many times I see people get enamored by what technology can do, and they fail, and this goes all the way back to the education process, higher education, and, and through coll coll collegial into media companies themselves. There's almost a race to be first, that sometimes you see people skipping some of the fundamental basics of good storytelling. Um, just as I said, you know, you watch a Pixar movie, you don't, if you ever think about the technology or anything that d delivered the story, then Pixar has failed in its storytelling ability. And yeah. so we focus on that. I do think, though, and we are trying as a company to um, uh, help where we can and encourage the transference of, of IP. There's no need, as a company ourselves, you know, we've just had a huge hit that actually came out of Argentina called Violetta. It's a live action telenovela format um, created out of um, Argentina for the. Um, uh, Disney Channel, and that has became a hit not just in, in Latin America, but then in Southern Europe, and then it moved to Northern Europe, even in the UK and beyond. That format has spawned a uh, 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 fantastic success. It now goes into live music, into consumer products, into digital products. All of that came from great storytelling. Mm. Um, we are take, we've taken you know, uh, animated shows and games, as an example, from Japan and brought them around the world. You know, as we develop our business here in not just the UAE, but generally, I mean, what, what's interesting about the way we look at this market is I, I really I'm, I want to not just be regional specific or country specific, but also language specific. Right. So we're really looking this for as, an, as much as from the Arabic language perspective as we are from a, a Middle East or, or UAE perspective. It's, you know, how can we take the, the elements of the Disney brand and tailor them for the, that set of consumers throughout the broad region? Mm -hmm. And over time, as, you know, as I say, we have a, a team of about 20 people in um, Dubai who, who are um, working on building our business here. Um, I think over time it would be great to start to be involved in the creative community and in the storytelling community mm. in this region because it's a, it's a region, one of the great things about this part of the world is it has great stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And they are universal in their global stories. Mm -hmm. And so how 
oh, you know, we have to learn to walk before we run right. too fast, but it's a great question. Um, I'm afraid uh, I'm being told that we have to end, wrap it up there. I'm really sorry for everyone putting their hand up. Um, but could you join me in thanking Andy for... Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.